away, eggshell away. That's why he was just saying it's a dirty eggshell. But, it, but I said before that Space Mountain definitely fits the a new, they don't have to do anything with Space Mountain to make it work because it, it's, that's exactly the kind of art that we just saw, right? You yeah. look at Space Mountain and that's it. Yeah. It fits perfectly. You don't have to do anything to Space Mountain. I hate to keep doing this to you, Ron. No, I love it. I, well, no, that, because you haven't seen episode four yet of the Imaginary <laughs> Story. I didn't know you were recording right this second either. Yes, what? I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, I alluded to this, I teased it. There's a, there's this, okay, Joe Rohde plays a big role in episode four. He has, they, they talked to him a lot in terms of both Animal Kingdom, and because he created Animal Kingdom, that was his thing. Uh, but he was, he's, at the end of the episode, he starts talking about the intersection of art and commerce, and how, or art and business, and how they don't, right. they don't intersect a lot no. of times. That they can't, they can't get along. Conflicting agendas. Yeah, there are conflicting agendas, exactly. Uh, a while back, I did a video on Fresh Bake Presents, a news video where I had heard a rumor that Joe Rohde, I shouldn't say that, an Imagineer was <laughs> spotted up here on the People Mover tracks and in the you know the old People Mover loading area. I do recall this. Surveying Tomorrowland. And I didn't name him, but a certain well-known, very recognizable right. uh, Imagineer I said. Now a lot of people assumed it was Tony Baxter, but it wasn't, it was Joe Rohde. Yeah. Joe Rohde was spotted in Tomorrowland looking at taking a survey of, of the land. I, can, I feel like I can, I can say this now because in Imagineering Story, he is seen at the end of the episode on a 3D printed model of Tomorrowland with all of the buildings, everything to scale, uh, you know, looking at it quizzically, looking at it as though he were a lead Imagineer on a renovation project trying to figure out, you can see it in his mind, the wheel's turning. And at one point, he picks up the model for Launch Bay. He picks up Launch Bay. He's like, trying to see how it would look with Launch Bay gone. With Launch Bay gone. Is that how the episode closes? Very near the end, yes. Yeah, it's like it feels like it. <laughs> and it, this, that scene of him doing that is also delivered in the context of him talking about the intersection of, of art and business and how it's difficult for those two, those two camps to get along. So he's having this conversation, he's like, gosh darn, it sucks to be an Imagineer in this world because right. they keep trying to keep us down. They want to, they got budgets and they got other agendas. Right. We're trying to build something great, big and beautiful. While he's saying this, he's taking right. out, right. he's taking out Launch Bay. And so that, those two things sort of uh, support the idea that, that Rhodey is involved in Tomorrowland. It supports the idea that there is a plan out there, a definite plan for Tomorrowland, that, they are, that they've got a direction, and that plan includes the total demolition of such buildings. I would, I would also say from a, story, from a storytelling standpoint, that also feels like, because obviously this is a produced episode that they had created and they had made, and they made talking points, which I haven't seen yet, but talking points about how the conflict of creative, yeah. the, the elements of that, like the director and a producer, so to speak. Yeah. If they did that and they aired that, that would make me think that that they are coming to some sort of an agreement, yes. and that have settled. They have, a, yes. They have, they have, they have, they 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 made up their mind in some way. Right. Now, the way I hear it, by the way, some people are suggesting that because this is not a Disney produced show, this is iWorks that produced this show, right. which is a separate. It's not a Disney. Owned no, company. for sure. Never mind that. Don't believe for a second that they're going to put a show on Disney Plus owned by Disney about Disney, <laughs> yeah. and they're not going to like do whatever you want. I don't care what you do. I, have fun. Yeah. It's Here, called, by the way, here's full access to WDI. It's called Final Cut, and I assure you, I worse do not have it. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but Joe Rudy works for the Disney company. Exactly. So it's not like he's he's going to get to say whatever he wants right. without any kind of oversight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is, there's a message in everything. Correct. I believe that. I there's, totally. Everything agree. that you see is say, like, yes, this, no, that. Yes, this, no, that. This is, the, this is the message we want to send. That's not the message we want to send. That is they sent a message. I 100% believe that they sent a message. I could not agree more. Uh, now, one of the things that some folks have wondered is that why can't you just, if we're talking about reskinning, why do you have to take down, Liz asked this question, she's like, oh no, why do they have to keep tearing stuff down? I don't want to see Launch Bay, the building, go. Well, it's simple. 
They can't make it work in there. They cannot make it work. They, they, they've I tried think, five different ways. <laughs> nothing works in there. Nothing Nobody goes in there. Since Carousel of Progress, maybe America Sings. Uh, but other than that, nothing has worked. But, but uh, agreed, how does it work if it's not there anymore? So. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it was, it, it was successful, but not successful enough to keep. Right, and, but it was, and it, and it was successful because at the time, it was very innovative. Sure, sure. A rotating building with multiple show floors, and it, it seemed very futuristic. Uh, today, it's like, I mean, literally. Well, it doesn't move anyway. It doesn't yeah. rotate anymore anyway. So it's, uh, now it's just a round building that you can't make anything work in. I mean, they could literally do anything other than what they're doing with it, and I would be on board. I don't know if you got any kind of. Folks, if you have any kind of engineering or architectural background, how hard is it to build, to create, to imagine something in a round room? <laughs> Do you, I, think, I feel like you need corners. Yeah, I mean, unless it's a venue, unless, it, unless yeah, like a like to do a like a staple show. setup, yeah. right? <laughs> like yeah, for acoustics or something right, like that. Right, right, right. I feel like that's ill, ill designed, ill equipped for anything besides what it used to be, and otherwise it's it's useless. Uh, so I, the question is now, it isn't what it, it isn't whether or not they're going to do it. It isn't whether or not they're going to remodel Tomorrowland. It's how much. Is it going to be plan A or plan B? And I do believe that they do have two plans, and it all hinges on Rise of the Resistance. Plan A is total demo of everything but stuff like Space Mountain, maybe the monorail, which we're going to get to in a second, maybe Autopia, who knows. Right. Uh, but demo just about everything and build from the ground up. Plan B is a bunch of reskins with a little demo. Right. And the reskin thing would be if Rise doesn't resonate, if it doesn't impact the bottom line, which, by the way, no chance of that. Uh, for everything right. I hear about Rise, it's a freaking home run. Right, so. right. <laughs> right. It is interesting to like listen to what they're telling us in some regard. Where yeah. they did even uh, Pizza Planet, the the re the oh, the entrance they've redone. They've done Stardust, if you want to call it that, on well, Autopia, yeah. all over the place. So yeah. they have done lots of touch-ups. Now, on one hand, you could say, that's just paint. They've done enough just to buy the couple years they're going to need. Yeah. And that's really what it is, because I know for sure, we've spoken about this. So Marvel Land's going to open. And that's going to be a big thing that's going to draw crowds. Then there's a, it shouldn't take two years to do Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Train. However, they, sl they slated it. 21, I think. They slated that for 2022. Did they? I thought it was 21. Well, uh, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's 2022, though, okay. because it's the summer of now and then the following year. So it would be two years. So it would be the, the year after Marvel for sure. So then obviously they're not going to do anything until after that. So right. that means all the skinning, all the painting could be, literally be, let's just buy three to five years. Well, yeah, look at, you, you mentioned Alien Pizza Planet. Uh, they, they didn't do anything in there. They put no, a facade they up. put it. They, <laughs> they put the facade. rocket, they put the rocket in the face. Uh, yeah. So it's not like they said, okay, here's your, this is our new imagine, right. our new idea for, <laughs> no, it's not. It's just, right. It's just a, a, a placeholder until they, they, they have yep. a more play. Autopia paint, the, the, the panels that we keep talking about behind the tarps, minor. Does have, in the grand scheme of things, those are very, very minor blemish uh, clean up. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Right. All right. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about left uh, on this conversation is the monorail. Let's go for right. Let's go for right. I uh, want to sort of dissect Tomorrowland and say all the ways that it doesn't work. This scene right here, this vista, in combination with what I'm about to show you, redeems the entire land for me. I love the monorail platform above the Autopia tracks like this. I love this. I love the monorail platform giving you a view of the Nemo subs, which, by the way, look fantastic. The, 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 the dance, the little ballet that they do when the boats come in and out and the, and the guests come in and out is fantastic. Love that. I love this right here. I wish, how much would you give Fresh Big to be able to see a monorail go by like that, right there. At the same time, you're watching these Autopia cars drive through and to have uh, People Mover. That's the People Mover track right there. That's monorail, that's People Mover. How fantastic would it be to have 
all that happening at once. That is, or that was, Tomorrowland on the move. They called it Tomorrowland on the move, Ron. They, in, 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 the, in the late 60s, monorail, Autopia, the people mover, the Skyway, yes! Tomorrowland on the move. When we talk about messaging, they said the words in the Disney Parks blog. Look at that. I know, it's cool. That's on the move. And so is the waterfall, the best waterfall yeah. spot in the park. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, they said the words in the Disney Parks blog when they announced that they showed the concept art. The concept art has in the in the article, right. Tomorrowland on the move. So, David, what you're saying is my dream of even fake Skyway coming back. Dude, <laughs> I would, I would 100% settle for an unmanned people mover vehicle just going back and forth. A million percent. I would, million good, percent. I'm good. I don't have to be in it. I would love to, right. but I want to see movement. movement sure. It doesn't have to be real. I would prefer it. I would love to ride the people right. mover. Ian, that's the first thing he's going to do when right. he gets to Walt Disney World is ride the people mover in Tomorrowland. The Skyway for sure. That is so cool. Say what you will about Finding Nemo subs. This is poetry. I like every single thing about this area and this ride except yep. the ride. You <laughs> said, well, and that's like where- getting you, in the sub. Every time I go, I try to find some sort of mental space where I'm like, okay, I'm enjoying this because I need to, because yeah. I want to enjoy it so bad because it is so beautiful in every other way that I try to, I have to like, coach myself into right, like, right. this is great! It is. It's the, the notion is amazing. It's just the, low, the getting in and getting out. Yeah. Well, I don't mind that. I, I enjoy this part. I enjoy the, the that's why I'm saying, the, you know, when they, when they pop the, 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 the hood or whatever and you get in, it's just that Tomorrowland on the move. <laughs> That I don't like about Nemo is the, the the scenes, the projected scenes in the yeah yeah. I'm not crazy about that. I love this. The practicals are yeah. Awful. This all this right here is I, well. I like this. No, 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 I like this too. Like under like this this the the diver oh. and stuff. They're, yeah, they're, they could be up. I, I get it. Yeah. We like practicals much much better than the, than the yeah. Oh, for sure. They need to upgrade the practice. Yep. Just like watching the subs move. Yeah, they're cool. Watching the subs navigate their way around that little. I could watch that and meditate on that for, for, for hours. Right. And it's interesting because as a child, this is one of my all-time favorite rides that I wanted to go on. Just it's something yeah, about the I remember the that submarine. too. When I was little. But it was the yeah, it was a submarine voyage back then. Submarine but. voyage, but just the like you just wanted to experience what it was yeah. like in a sub. As yep. a kid, you really wanted yep. it. It was a novel thing to look out the little portholes and it was yeah. so cool. It really was. And it really that illusion of actually going and submerging was real. Yep. Be sure to watch your children and no smoking, please. Bienvenidos. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos, brazos, pies y pies. You talk of whether or not monorail could survive a remodel, or at least all of the monorail. One of the coolest things about, and this is going back to my childhood, I don't remember a lot of my trips to Disneyland when I was little. But one of the coolest things that I remember was the fact that the monorail left the park. Oh, and you're out here, you're out here on Disney Boulevard. Is Disney yeah. you know, I thought that was so cool. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. You're so immersed. You are immersed in, as a child in it. And then when you see, you forget. You forget yeah. the real world out there. The most, the most common uh, idea about monorail is that they're going to chop off the back half, the part that goes over the Autopia track. Uh, so it's basically just going to be a trip back and forth to the, from the hotel. Uh, that speaks to Tron. Right. Well, yeah, if they, and I don't know how they make it work because 
I, I feel like there's so much we are now infrastructure required to build Disney Tron Station. that it would consume to the downtown Disney a lot of the, I don't know how you work Disney around Disney the monorail track. Track. I guess uh, to me, when I hear the information like that, it's like, okay, why, why, are, why are, is Please, this a rule? Why are they, they making a choice the to cut or clip in this area? Why? Why would be true? Because something else is going Something big, something that needs the space. It's either that or an expansion of Fantasyland. The they were talking about Beauty and the Beast then taking that one. back half Lower of the Autopia track. Watch your I don't Home want them to take it. Right. Something White, else. Peter Pan and other storybook characters. It wasn't always this way. As we make our way around Matterhorn Mountain, we're now on final approach. We're now approaching, we're approaching, now approaching when the they first built the monorail. Motor it didn't have that. Our I don't remember. It wasn't. It was. It Please was literally just a trip back and forth to the hotel. To a they did. They did one loop then collect your out over the lagoon. Watch your head. There was a little bit of track over the lagoon, the but none of it went over Autopia. What do you know? Roughly Thanks what year that was? They added that like I want to say maybe five years later. It's in the it's in the history video I did on Monorail. Right. I'm sure I've been on it a hundred times. Your mind, my mind anyway, tells me. This has always been here. This has always been the monorail, right there. That, always been there. But no, that's, that's, well, I don't want to say new, but they added that after the monorail became a success a little bit, they added more track and more cars or more uh, more trains. Yeah, intellectually, I knew that, but I didn't know when or where or yep. what I'd been on and what I hadn't been. Yeah, uh, but this is the part. This is the area that uh, is possibly up for you know, God, you know, standing here, I'm looking over there at Launch Bay off in the distance. It doesn't feel like that big a space. Right. Uh, but I guess, yeah, I guess it is. It is so cool to see all the layers that you see on the track. All right. Between here and there, you just see different layers, trees, uh, track. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That's monorail. That's Tomorrowland on the move, Ron, again. It's on the move. It's on the move. Let's keep it on the move. Let's keep it on the move by adding some boats down here. That would work. Gummy Glen, the motorboat cruise. This, Ron, that used to be a place for guests to load I know. into a motorboat. I right also there. don't remember that. I don't either. You know, I, I, this, is, this is a conversation that I have constantly. Every chance I get, Tomorrowland, talk about Tomorrowland, it's like one of my <laughs> favorite things. I don't yeah. know, it, it really is. I, uh, it, both good and bad, like sure. the way it works and the way it doesn't. And uh, there's just so much, there's so much here to to uh, to talk about and to yeah. evaluate. I mean, it is a riddle. There's so much that, like, how do how do we fix it, or how do we how do if, if it needs fixing, which it does. But you know what I mean. There's so it's the one area that is not perfect, I guess, for lack yeah. of a better term. So yeah. that opens the conversation of how what would you do to make it perfect, or what could they fix, what could they change. So that the conversation never stops. That's a great way to end this conversation. Uh, if you're asking me, what's the one thing? that you would do to, to fix Tomorrowland. For me, it's, a, a, it's more about an idea. It's not like adding a ride or this. I don't believe, I don't believe in e-tickets, to be honest. Right. I, I do in a sense, but I don't think that they are the answer. I don't think that the ride itself is the answer. You don't wanna, you build an environment first and then the rides take care of themselves. Would anybody have predicted that Pirates of the Caribbean or Haunted Mansion be the most famous attractions in the world? Nobody would have put that on paper and said, this is how you do it. Nobody. 
It's just that's how it happened. Uh, so my one thing that I would suggest to fix Tomorrowland would be to get rid of the idea that it needs to be in the future. A future, yes, I agree. Uh, I agree. It could, it could, it could be 1968. It could be 1982. Right. Uh, but you need to fix a point in time, and then let. In the 60s, there was the, the future was a huge conversation. Sure. Everything was, you know, technology was starting with microwaves and, uh, you know, they're talking about jetpacks and, and, and flying cars, and that's when all that started. Let that be, uh, uh, you know, your 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 theme, uh, and that way you can you can fix a point in time. It's just like Main Street is a fixed yeah. point in time, turn of the century, you know, Adventureland, Frontierland. These are fixed points in time. Or you could take it to a place, I mean, they already have bought too, but you could take it to a place that's not the current world that we live in, that's fine. But yeah. you, if you start playing with technology, you're doomed because yep. technology is so fast. You will never, especially today. So especially today. Um, uh, for me, to answer that question is real simple and it's a little bit of a throwback. It's the four quadrants. Let's hit women, children, young and old. Let's hit go. them so we can have, that's why I told you it's important because it, yep. it works for all ages and it's fun and it's great. So. I don't know what that mixture would be, Space Mountain. Keep what you, a lot of what you have, the Lagoon, all these things. But hit the four quadrants and also on the move. I mean, I, yeah. am, I swear the energy, kinetics, movements, high, low, all around, water, every, anything that you can do to get movement going. Balloons, I don't care. Just You could that. do that and you could do that in any theme. You like what, any whatever theme. you choose, if you, you know, your, your four quadrants can hit right. that. Uh, 1982 could hit that, 1968 yeah. could hit that. High, low, fast, spin. Yeah. Whatever it is, it just that still goes back to the old days. The visuals of the people mover, the visuals of the skyline, mm -hmm. the skyway. I keep calling it the skyline. The I know, skyway, yeah. fake. We've talked about that before too. It's just the illusion. At, of at the minimum, aesthetics. yeah, yeah. Just give me that just at least. Let me see it, yeah. and it's great. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Fresh Bake? What is your one thing? If you could do one thing to Tomorrowland, what would that be to make it the Tomorrowland in your vision, uh, to your liking? Or maybe you do nothing at all. Look, monorail. Uh, maybe you do nothing at all. Maybe you like Tomorrowland just the way it is. Let us know in the comments below. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button. Uh, but you, you know what? Check back in anyway, because sometimes those notifications don't, <laughs> they don't hit, even if you have it turned on. Uh, if you want to support Fresh Bake, you can do so by buying a t-shirt. There are links below. Uh, you can also visit our website where you can buy a fresh baked pin or some mini ears. Uh, and then, of course, there's always our Patreon community, uh, Patreon campaign. Uh, that's uh, patreon.com slash fresh baked. A little or nothing, anything helps. Uh, by the way, we do have some extra content that we upload to some of our Patreon members there. So you can get, I do like little vloggy stuff, uh, shorts, uh, things of that nature. So there is additional content available on Patreon. Uh, but other than that, guys, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Fresh baked. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!